Very good morning to you. Welcome once again to Hockenheim for the uh, second race in the Carrera Cup Deutschland season 2017. Very different weather day to that that we experienced yesterday. Will that have an effect on the race? Only time will tell. There's a lot of cloud around. There was some rain overnight at the moment as the cars make their way to the grid. It is absolutely bone dry. And of course, today's race is the slightly longer race for the Carrera Cup drivers, 35 minutes of racing to come. Yesterday's race, very, very dramatic, expecting uh, more of the same today as the long season for the Carrera Cup gets underway. We're here at Hockenheim for the opening round. Up next, we go over to the Lausitz ring, then it's the Red Bull ring, Norris ring, Nürburgring. Two appearances at the Nürburgring uh, before Saxon ring, and then, wow, where has the year gone? It will be mid-October, and the grand finale will be here once again at Hockenheim. So lots of new faces in the Carrera Cup for this year. This was a recap of race number one. With Mikhail Amamullah then with a blistering start when the lights went out and into turn number one. He made sure that pole position counted and uh, he was in the lead. P2, Dennis Olsen. P3, uh, Christopher Zochling. On board with uh, Gabriela Piana starting from P10. He was a little bit late on the brakes and Nick Yellerly was one that was able to take uh, great advantage with that. On board with Nick Yellerly now. He was starting from P19, overtaking Ryan Cullen. More from Ryan in just a mo. P8, Yellerly would finish uh, P5 in the end. He cut through the pack like a proverbial knife through butter. Some great on-board shots then. The fight for P1, Amamula too late on the brakes into turn two. A little bit of a lock-up and we are on board with uh, Dennis Olsen with a better exit out of turn two. And was going to line up Mikhail Amamula and have a go at the uh, hairpin for P1. Great on-board shot from Dennis Olsen then, Porsche Junior. Got to make that Porsche Junior count this year. Now, going to go for the switch back here. Amamula out wide. The momentum there from Olsen was sufficient for him to be on the inside, which gives him the inside for the next turn. As you can see, Amamula relegated to P2. And Franz Conrad was a very happy man about that overtake move. Conrad Motorsport, of course, the uh, team that uh, Dennis Olsen has chosen to use in his second year as a Porsche Junior. And you can see how pleased he was to take victory in race one. Dennis Olsen, the race winner. We're back with our live pictures now. And alongside me, and uh, dare I say it, I'm sorry that you're alongside me, it's Ryan Cullen, who went in P6 yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, you had a uh, crash, and uh, that means that your car is so damaged that you can't be out in the race. Really, thanks uh, for having me here. And um, yeah, the car is a bit damaged uh, yesterday, and it's no time to fix it for today. And um, it's a shame I can't start today. I was starting from P4. Um, we had a, probably a good race with a few of the guys up front, and yeah, it's just motor racing sometimes. Yes, now, uh, of course, you've raced in um, a GT3 Cup across the Middle East. You've also done single-seaters in GP3 and into the Carrera Cup now. And something that we were discussing off the air and perhaps we should say is because people like myself and also uh, many others think that once you're a racing driver, you can just step out of any racing car and into another one and uh, win the race. It's not as easy as that, is it? No. Um, I, yeah, you race like someone like Nick or um, a few of the other guys, they race a very high level single series and you never really keep an eye on what goes on in Carrera Cups or GT racing. So you don't really pay attention to what's who the drivers are. And then you step into stuff like this and you expect to be at the front and you gotta give massive respect for people like Amon Muller and Zoekling and all these guys that have been doing this for a couple of years and they're very fast drivers. Sure. Something that uh, many people tell me uh, Christopher Zoeckling being one of them, is that the cars look really, really heavy duty and robust. And uh, we're looking at Nick Yellowley's car now, and impressive uh, race he had yesterday as he uh, cut through the pack. But those people that I speak to, Ryan, tell me that you really have to wring the neck of these cars to get the very best out of them. And I think we see that in the TV pictures where you're bouncing over the curbs and you really seem to be pushing very, very hard. And again, 
everyone tells me you know you've got to really push these cars yeah um that's unfortunately the um the reason i had a crash yesterday i was pushing too hard to because everyone's on the limit here and there's no abs or traction control in these cars and it's a porsche and they're not the uh, easiest car to drive but they're very fun to drive and yeah the times are really close and you have to find every single millisecond tenth you can find in each each session you do and try and improve the car and yourself is it fair to say ryan having come from being hugely successful in the middle east that um the carrera cup that has many many regional championships right across the world uh the german version of the carrera cup is probably the benchmark isn't it the most competitive yeah um i've raced i've done a few races in the british championship i did the middle east championship and yeah for sure that the german cup if you if you're near the front in german cup then it's a very good indication of where you would be in the international series super cup um but you have guys in this series that do back-to-back -back, uh, series with the Super Cup, so it's very popular for drivers to do this championship as well. Yes, yes, and, uh, often you're quite right. There's uh, dual campaigns, isn't there, in both the Carrera Cup, uh, Deutschland, and also in the Super Cup. One thing we've also learned is that actually the form guide from race number one doesn't necessarily give us the uh, uh, give us the result for race number two. Things can be very, very turbulent in terms of uh, the Carrera Cup. Now, I mentioned in the opening of the program that the weather conditions today, as we look at Luca Rattenbacker going from P8, um, at the moment it is dry, but it's somewhat colder than it was yesterday, and the threat of uh, cloud above as well. Do you, you know, when you when you make your way to the grid now, you know, you're as aware of uh, what the weather conditions are and how they might turn as well. Does that does that change your strategy in terms of how you set yourself up psychologically for the race? Yeah. Um, so leaving the grid yesterday, it was uh, you 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 know the conditions straight away and you kind of get a feel for the car in the first couple corners and you kind of can tell where the front tires will be in quickly or the rear tires are in straight away today it looks like it could be a few laps until the boys get a bit quicker and i think most of the guys now are maybe adjusting their brake bias or changing something with tire pressures or whichever their engineers decided to go with on the grid and of course you don't have an unlimited supply of tyres across a race weekend, do you? And you as a driver, how much influence do you have in terms of deciding when to use tyres, when not to use tyres, and, and the strategy across the two races of the weekend, and of course qualifying as well, when, when those tyres get used, right? Um, yeah, so you get three joker sets over the year, and um, I know one driver used the set yesterday, and it definitely helped him to get a good result. Um, I'm not sure many people are using a new set of tyres today, but you get two sets in qualifying and you yes. have to spread them across the two races. So usually you would do a longer run on the first set and then do a slightly shorter run on the second set and use the better set of tyres for the longer race. And on a day like today, when the, uh, you know, it's an early morning start, isn't it, for the uh, Carrera Cup drivers as we look at uh, Mikel Amamula. Um, how long will it take for those tyres to be brought up to a to a temperature that we would consider to be an operating temperature for a racing car is it, is it a lap a lap and a half right yeah i, I think a lap um the guys at the front will be working very hard you, okay you can see a, a difference in the guys in the front warming up their tires to the guys at the back and each each uh degree is of temperature it makes a massive difference as the race goes on um i think it's going to be an extra lap than yesterday because it's much colder Yes. And it's the first, uh, I think we guys are the first ones out, so the track conditions might be a bit green. Yes. Okay, so the grid is set then, and uh, it's Mikhail Amamola, Dennis Olsen alongside, then we find Nick Yellerly, Thomas Prining, then Christopher Sokling, he's going to be one to watch. Nick Yellerly, in my opinion, from P3, going to be one to watch as well. All eyes on the uh, P2 driver at the moment, that's the uh, Porsche Junior, Dennis Olsen. Uh, we are just a few seconds away from that final red light going out in the formation lap being underway here at Hockenheim, 4.574 kilometres circuit and a 35 minute race duration for the Carrera Cup. Early doors this morning on Sunday, day two of uh, the race weekend and the sound of those phenomenal boxer engines lights up then as the cars are away from the grid. As we mentioned yesterday, it's a much more healthy grid than we saw in the uh, Carrera Cup last year. 
lots of new faces, lots of established names, though, also in the Carrera Cup. And actually, by Jove, you can really tell the uh, experience when you look at the front of the grid. And Mikhail Amamuller, of course, supremely experienced in uh, the Carrera Cup, took a race win in the GT Masters last weekend. Dennis Olsen, of course, into his second year as Porsche Junior. Nick Yellily, another former single-seater racer and uh, also simulator driver for Force India. And what's really interesting, Ryan, is because I know Nick and uh, watched him last year in Carrera Cup, it took him virtually the whole season to get to grips with these cars. Yeah, um, I raced in the last year as well. And for instance, I raced Nick in GP3 and he was a very quick driver. And it took him, it was interesting for him to see because I did a few races before he ended up jumping to this side of the racing like I did. And it was interesting that it did take him, I think, f four rounds for him to eventually get to grips with the car. And uh, Nick's a nice guy. I was chatting to him a couple of times on the in the paddock and yeah what he's been saying is what i struggled with and like many drivers struggle with coming from single series is the braking yeah um no downforce as compared to a gp3 car or world series car and uh many drivers think that if you're a top level single series driver you can jump into anything and drive one of these cars but as we can see that it's taken a few people even someone like dennis olsen in the second mm. year who's a very good driver from junior categories, um, it does take a while. And you have someone like Michael Amamola, who's been very experienced in this. Mm. He's at the front, but you can see the guys behind him, Olsen, Yellily, even Prining, who's just jumped into it. They've done a very good job. Mm. And uh, Mr. Zokling is very experienced as well. So the top the top five are very, very good. And they're, they're the ve basically the benchmarks for this type of racing in Carrera Cups. What we should also mention is that uh, there are two categories, of course, across Carrera Cup. The A category and the B category. The A category is for uh, pro or semi-pro drivers, of course. B category more for, uh, I don't like using the term, but gentleman drivers, but certainly amateur drivers who, who come into this for fun at the weekend. And what really impressed me last season, perhaps the season before, and certainly this season in race number one, the, uh, the drivers that are in the B category, they're not so far off the pace, Ryan, are they? No, um, Wolfgang Triller is very good for yep. a B driver. He he's my teammate, and um, he treats it as serious as I do. He mm -hmm. he even looks through data with me, and sometimes he's as good as me in some corners. And I actually learn a bit from him and his approach to things. He's very calm. Very. Just very saw your boss on the, uh, <laughs> on the yeah. screen there, Christoph Huber. Yeah, <laughs> he's probably a bit nervous. He probably I think he wants to win today. Um, yeah, the B drivers they. For, for one or two laps they can keep up it's just when it comes down to experience and just being a pro driver it's consistency that they struggle with sometimes but Wolfgang is good uh, Wolf Nathan a few of the boys are quite quite good as I think they um, are as good as any driver I've really raced against in the back and presumably part of it as we await the green flag from the marshal at the rear is fitness and youth as well Ryan may I say yeah yeah it's very hot in the car there's no air conditioning in hot days it's very hot so you have to be very uh, focused. OK, here we go then. Race number two about to get underway. Lights are out. Amamula then with another good start. Good start too. Uh, coming from uh, Thomas Priding, who's going to squeeze Nick Yellily out at the turn number one here. So we have two Conrad cars, P2 and uh, P3. A number of the cars do run out wide. But once again, as yesterday, Amamula really nailed the start. But Dennis Olsen already challenging as they go into turn number two. So at turn number one then, that's when... Uh, Brining managed to uh, get himself up into that uh, P3 position, but he's coming under pressure now from Nick Yellily in the uh, all-yellow Project One motorsport car. And just keep your eyes on Christopher Sochling in P5 at the moment. He's making a play for it as well. Onto the Parabolica, the fastest part of this circuit. No Look at this. Olsen, Amamula side by side then. And are we going to get a carbon copy of what happened yesterday? Whoa, a little bit too much speed carried in there by the uh, Thomas Prining car. Thankfully, are we going to get all the cars through the hairpin without any damage? I think we are. So, and still, Olsen really, really pursuing Amamula. And these two with a clear track ahead of them have really broken away. But Christopher Sochling now is up to P3, Ryan. That was a great move. He um, he capitalised on Prining's lockup and it caught Nick Yeldy off guard. And uh, Christopher did a very good job there. He managed to get on the inside through the Frass right-hander. And he's probably going to try and chase down the pack flash in his lights as usual. <laughs> 
Yes, he is. Do you, does that ever, does that ever, ever affect you when you're driving, when you've got a driver behind you who is flashing his lights? I mean, surely it doesn't put you off, does it? No, it doesn't put me off. But if <laughs> if the guy's catching you and he's flashing, it, you do notice him catching you a bit quicker than usual. But, okay. Yeah. Uh, just got a shot of uh, Wolfgang Triller there, who is uh, probably the. Uh, I'm not sure. It might be Rubas, who's the best of the. Uh, B categories, but uh, as they cross the uh, timing line, one lap in the book, then Amamula, Olsen, Zoekling, Nick Yellerly, then it's Thomas Brining, who's lost out on a couple of places. Then it's Stug and Rettenbacher and Schmidt Stader. And you can see there, is bringing up the uh, second page of the uh, live timing that we can bring you on screen. So at the moment, Amamula has resisted the uh, clutches of uh, Dennis Olsen. As that was a brave and audacious move up the inside there, but it worked. We've seen it go horribly wrong there before now, but that one did work. Yeah, that was pretty good in uh, the B category at the back. It was uh, very special. But I think Dennis Olsen is very quick out of turn two compared to Michael Amamula, which gives him a good attack uh, through the hairpin. But Amamula, having used, having done so much work here at the uh, Hockenheim circuit, and that was an example of not how not to use the hairpin, wasn't it? Carrying too much speed. Yeah, that that was unfortunate. Um, I think maybe safety car might have to come out to clear the debris. So that's Richard Gonda then, who um, and also uh, damaged in that is Carlos Rivas then, the uh, Black Falcon team for TMD Friction. Uh, there's debris on the car, and also uh, pirouetting there is Kim Andre House Child, the uh, speed lover racer. And you're absolutely right, Ryan. Safety car has been called for debris on the track, and quite a bit of damage to the rear end of that Porsche. That's not going to continue, is it? Because surely that tyre is going to rapidly deflate, isn't it? Yeah, and I think the green car has stopped, and there's a bit of smoke coming out. I'm not sure if there was maybe oil on track. I'm not quite sure, but um, the safety car hasn't come out yet. Oh, look at that. Fluid is, you're right, it's just being thrown out. That's coolant, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, because yeah, that's going to be very slippery. That's one of the uh, weak points, isn't it, of the uh, of the Carrera in terms of uh, damage, the Carrera Cup car, because there's uh, the cooling is right at the front of the car, isn't it? So any impact on that front corner, as you can see, that's always going to damage the cooling system. Yeah, the um, so the engine's in the back of the Porsche, and you, if any contact you get in the front, there's only really the coolant and the uh, radiators in the front and a little contact like this or even just going into the back of someone going down the straights or a stone could easily put you out of the race so you have to be very careful with the front of the car and the Porsche. Now just seeing the uh, slow-mos of that and how that happened it's you know a mistake of one driver perhaps that potentially can uh, destroy the race of three four others of course. Yeah it, it, this is the unfortunate thing with um, sprint racing and cup racing is that everyone's really up for it for 30 minutes and in endurance racing it ten, ten, people tend to take it a bit easier the first couple of laps but okay. these cars are so equally matched that any little any little advantage you can oh. get or any movement oh no Wolfgang Triller who of course um, was victorious in the uh, B category yesterday it looks like his race is done again you can see coolant right at the yeah. front of the car can't you that's oh. a shame for Wolfgang he was leading I think he might have been leading the B championship. Yeah, uh, absolutely, you're yeah. right. Yes, and you're B right. champion last year, so this won't be good for his uh, championship hopes. But I'm sure um, he'd be very disappointed that he's not finished today. Yeah, that's a great shame. Now, just before that incident unfolded, um, I was going to go on to say that Mikel Amamola, with all the experience he has, particularly around uh, Hockenheim, inevitably he's done he's done more laps of Hockenheim than Dennis Olsen has. Is it fair to say, Ryan, that it's actually the exit of... Is that Thomas Prining? Yep. I don't know what he's done there. Now, that's just an error, isn't it? Yeah, I think that might be cold tyres. It's very... We've only already done two laps, and um, the cold tyres would have maybe caught him out. Because okay. I think he's just made a, a silly mistake, but he's easy. It's his second race in Porsches, so yeah, sure. you expect this stuff to happen with him. And... Uh, really trying to warm the tyres up now. Yeah, it's very aggressive, isn't but, it? But um, it'll be interesting to see what you can do now. Back to my Amamula thought process then. Amamula, having done probably double, if not treble, the laps of Den Dennis Olsen around here, he knows exactly where to put that car to defend a move at the hairpin. OK, uh, Olsen caught him yesterday and, and delivered an overtake yesterday, but it's almost the exit of that hairpin turn is almost as important as the entry, isn't it? Yeah, um... The, the turn two is very crucial for overtakes, so if 
if you know the guy in front of you is getting bad exit, you don't really necessarily have to break as late as him, but you can just concentrate on the exit and you eventually will get a tow down to turn three. Well, sorry, turn three should be easy flat, but down to the hairpin in turn four. Right. And um, but it kind of sets you up if you can attack in the hairpin, then you can get a run like we've seen yesterday when uh, Christopher Zoeckling did it today and um, like, like we see now. So Prining very nearly yeah. made contact there with the mm. back of Olsen's car, didn't yeah. he? This is, and what he's going for, he's going for the switchback here, isn't he? He's going to try and dive up the yeah, inside of like that. Like he did yesterday, yeah. He tried. Yeah, that. It looks like the car is almost brought to a stop. Yeah. Isn't, Ooh, but yeah, and there's teammates clashing as well. And yeah, I think the conditions, it's very cold and it, the track is the first with the first race. So I think it's catching a few people off guard with the front brakes locking and yeah, it's normal. No ABS, no traction control. These cars have got more power this year. And uh, having experience from the old car will um, give you a little bit of um, experience, but it, with, with more power, you're approaching the corners much quicker. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. And you've got to scrub that speed, haven't you? And uh, cold tyres, is it fair to say that because of the um, heat generated and radiated, from the brakes and from the tyres as well, it's it's almost as critical to have those brakes warm too. Yeah, that's um, engineers go on about um, throttle and brake. You have to really work your brakes as it heats the tyre from the inside. And if you go into the turn one or the start of a race and your tyre uh, your brake pads are cold, it, sometimes they can bite and you lock up. Okay. So you need everything working. Amamulla then backs them up because the safety car is coming in this lap and Amamulla will give it an absolute footfall and it's going to be down to Olsen and Zoeckling to almost try and anticipate when Mikhail Amamulla is going to go for it because it's his responsibility now to control the pace of the restart. No overtaking of course before you've crossed that safety car line that you can see and uh, it's Amamulla then Olsen the one to watch or the two to watch here potentially that might be able to spring a surprise Christopher Zoeckling and also Nick Yellerly, who are running in P3 and P4. So through turn one we go, following this uh, safety car intervention. And uh, Mikhail Amamula then. And Olsen is going to be in this uh, awful position where he's going to want to hunt down Mikhail Amamula, but he's going to have to focus on defending as well as they go through turns two and three. And onto the Parabolica. Now Olsen really is beginning to uh, reel Amamula in once again. Conrad Motorsport, of course, years and years and years of experience in uh, Porsche racing. Know how to engineer a good car. Nick Yellerly takes a look at Christopher Zoeschling as they go into this uh, hairpin now. Yellerly on the outside of Zoeschling. Zoeschling just has taken a look at the inside, but he's right on the gearbox of uh, Olsen. And Olsen now trying to get up the inside of Amamula, and I think he's done it. That was extraordinary. Didn't see that coming, Ryan Cullen, did you? Yeah, I think Amon will have got a bad exit and he got on the um, on the curbs. Maybe there's, I think there's oil. Oh, no. Yeah, this is where the cars were going off and there might be some uh, coolant on the exit curb. I think Amon will have got a bit sideways. And as you can see there, someone locked up. I think uh, they could be right slippery for you. Right, and now Amon Muller is under pressure from Christopher Zoglin because Amon Muller is relegated to P2. Zoglin then is P3. Olsen is our leader and he's up the road like a fast thing, isn't he? Mm. And Nick Yellerly is almost uh, just waiting for the Amamula and Zoeckling yeah. battle to continue and he's going to try and pick up the pieces from this. Yeah, I think I think Nick is going to be patiently waiting. It's a long race still. And I think he knows that the there's a bit of oil, so I don't think he's going to take any massive risk. Good move up the inside oh. there of Henrik Skoog. Not oh, quite oh. a good move in fairness. That coming from the uh, David Colkman car. Yeah, uh, that's that's a bit clumsy from the two there. And Skoog is bogged down in that gravel. He's not going to be able to get out of that, unfortunately. Comes Zoeckling again on uh, Mikhail Amamula. So much action going on here. And, oh, a little bit of a love tap there from uh, Nick Yellerly on the back of uh, Christopher Zoeckling. Just as the cars are really, really uh, heavily braking. Now back onto the Parabolica then. Could be a safety car. OK. Maybe. maybe. Reminder to you that uh, we have alongside us Ryan Cullen, who's Whilst he's happy to be alongside us in commentary, of course, he'd far rather be out there in, the, in his racing car. But uh, damage to the car yesterday meant that uh, it wasn't able to be repaired today for Ryan to be back out in the car. And uh, in replay then. And yeah, the exit curve, I think he just... He just wasn't, yeah. Yeah, he got a bad exit and 
But yeah. it was a bit opportun opportunistic from uh, Olsen, but he took that opportunity. Yeah, he? yeah, but this is what happens at the front. Um, Dennis, Amamura, Zokling, Yedele, these guys, you can see they're all close together, and any little mistake you make, you, they're, they're going to capitalise every time. Now, this was the clumsy Colkman move on the number 20 car of Henrik Skoog. Henrik yeah. is a rookie racer into the uh, Carrera Cup, and where that car has a big bogged itself down in the gravel mm. that has um, deployed the safety car again, yeah. hasn't it? Um, yeah, I don't think they can get that car out pretty quickly. Um, that's just tyre on tyre. Um, mm. Unfortunately, David was well on the inside kerb, and um, I think Henrik tried to give him as much room as he could. But that's just, I think it's a racing incident on both parts. That was a little tap there that came from Yellow Lee on the back of uh, Zokling. It didn't unsettle the car at all. And no. here's Henrik then getting out of the car. He's going to be pretty um, peeved, isn't he, unfortunately? And for the second time of asking, the uh, safety car is deployed. And as a, uh, as a top driver, Ryan, mm -hmm. someone like Olsen, who's just put himself in the lead and was beginning to really get up the road, you know, it's Blooming irritating, isn't it, that you have a safety car because you, you, your margin has been neutralised. Yeah, I think I think by the looks of Dennis's car, his car was very quick at the beginning. And yes. I think Michael's car might be very strong at the end. Um, okay. Just from what happened in the race yesterday, I think um, this will play perfectly into Michael's hands as the race goes on because I think Dennis definitely had an advantage at the beginning of this race. Mm -hmm. And um, it'll be interesting to see if he can still keep this speed up um, or Michael might be able to reel him in. So I think Michael's strategy might be to be a bit stronger at the end. OK. Well, we will see if that uh, strategy uh, plays out. There, the uh, car is about to be uh, recovered then. And... Uh, but the gravel doing a good job there, not yeah. really hitting the barrier, which is good. We haven't seen any shots of uh, Christoph Huber, who won't be as um, smiling across his face perhaps now will he no I All those I, drivers in the gravel there yeah it's um, another car that's DNF'd and um, I think this is always going to be a hard weekend because a lot of guys test here it's the first race everyone's yeah. everyone's pumped up and yeah I think Michael doing a good job in qualifying getting both pole positions but that's only half the fight you have to win both races and I think Christoph really wants to win the team, uh, the drivers' championship this year because he just missed out on it last year. Yes, yes. He's a super guy, actually. Yeah. Um, and it's funny how the, you know, the team bosses across the Carrera Cup—they're all very characterful in their own way. I mean, uh, um, Franz Conrad, who defies logic in terms of he doesn't seem to age from one year to the next. Mm -hmm. uh, Christoph Huber, of course, so so associated with Walter Lechner learned his craft in, in uh, with Lechner. Um, the uh, very tall and uh, curly blonde Hans Bern camps from the Project One team. So uh, just about every team that you talk about. And then uh, Carsten Molitor, of course, with MRS. Safety car leads the cars away then uh, around. And David Coltman going to be reported to the stewards of the meeting for causing a collision. That's probably no surprise to either you nor me. Yeah, I, I think they're going to have to look into that because whenever a car goes off and doesn't finish, that's the um, result that the stewards have to look into that. Well, at the moment, the um, weather is remaining dry, thankfully. We're lap seven of 18. Now, um, there is a 35-minute uh, uh, duration in terms of time on this race. Yeah, it's a shame for Henrik. He was having a good race. Um, I think he started around P9, and I think he was made a few positions. So, um, But it's also close racing that everyone's fighting for every inch that you get, and mm. um, that's this is cup racing, and 30 minutes sprint is um, pretty much feels like a one-hour race because you know, everyone's intense and trying to fight for everything. It's a great shot there of what is a drag strip here at Hockenheim. Mean, not a lot of people realise that a drag strip exists here, and that's part of the course that's being used by uh, World Rallycross, which was, is also here this weekend. It's a fantastic weekend for motorsport fans, to be honest. So much race action. Um, and uh, sad to see the uh, Henrik Skoog car being uh, tracted away there. Just as we were looking at the cars behind the safety car as they were around the Parabolica heading up towards the hairpin, some incredible vigorous weaving coming from particularly Christopher Zoetling, but all the drivers as well, yeah. because it's critical, isn't it, to try and maintain the same form of temperature into those tyres? Yeah, because it's an 18-lap race, as was longer than yesterday, not normally you get two safety cars, so 
the um, the teams would have set their tire pressures pretty low mm. to um, try and compensate for the longer race. And when you have a safety car, you're essentially getting a shorter race. And if the tire temperatures are up, then I think the guys are literally trying to simulate as much heat as they can okay. to try and get the temperatures up so they're really strong at the end of the race. Okay, safety car coming back in then, and that means it is the responsibility this time around of uh, Dennis Olsen to control the pace of the restart. He's given it a footfall around the uh, second from last turn. Now round the final turn, Olsen Ammermuller, then it's Zokling and uh, Yellow Lee, the one, two, three, four, with uh, Luca Rettenbacher, who very quietly has made his way up to P5 now. So through turn number one they go then. Yellowly looking very, very lively indeed. He's going to be um, still probably uh, one to watch come the uh, later stages of this race, as is uh, Christopher Soakling. And then Ryan has made the point that, you know, looking at the uh, Ammermulla car, that may well come good towards the end of the race as well. So still an awful lot of race action to come, but Olsen doing exactly what he needs to do, and that's just gapping back to that P2 car, isn't it? Yeah, um, I think Olsen's car is very quick at the beginning. Michael seems to be struggling a bit out of turn two. And these guys, I think they have a bit more pace than the guy in fifth place. So it's going to be a very interesting fight. If As long as we don't get another safety car, this, I have no idea how this is going to plan out. No. <laughs> OK. <laughs> well, Amamula now on Olsen. And Yellowly was taking a real look at Zoukling there. Yellowly, oh, she's across yeah. the curbs there and picks up a bit of grass as well. But good save from uh, Nick Yellowly, who managed to hold onto that car. He was really, really pushing Zoukling, wasn't he? And yeah. again, Zoukling is... You know, this driver who's in the unfortunate position where he's trying to attack the car in front, but he's all, got to be mindful to defend as well from the car behind. Yeah, yeah, it's, this is this is perfect cup racing. You're, you're attacking the guy in front, but the guy behind you is very close, so you're, you're, you're having to... It, the concentration is massive in these cars because you can have a slight lock-up and lose one place. Larry Tenvorda is coming under. Real pressure from Luca Rettenbacker. And Vorder, of course, having got past that uh, Luca Rettenbacker car now, means that Rettenbacker is uh, fighting back. Olsen uh, completes another lap then uh, as a race leader. He's got six tenths of a margin over Mikhail Ammermuller, who's in four tenths ahead of Christopher Zokling, and then four tenths to uh, Nick Yellowly. But it's uh, almost zero, isn't it? Four tenths is but a sneeze. Jorn Schmidt starter. Is running in P9. He's the um, bit of damage from car four. Yeah. So Parabolica once again. Yana there in uh, car number four, which is lining up that uh, number 33 car ahead. So Larry uh, Tenvorda there. It's interesting that uh, David Cockman, who was. Uh, under investigation, he's under investigation for the uh, loss of the uh, car we saw a few moments ago, which provoked the safety car. He uh, running a different livery to all the other Project One cars that are out there. As Ammermuller now on Olsen. Was that an error by Olsen? Because that just allowed Ammermuller to get right alongside. Oh. Olsen puts his elbows out, That's doesn't he? Oakling on the inside. Whoa! All over the back of uh, Dennis Olsen then. So Olsen from having a reasonable margin, all of a sudden Ammermuller has come back at him and actually Zoxling is really, really pushing him as well, isn't he? Yeah, this is this is what I meant. You, you can get a run on the guy in front, you attack him and you lose a bit of time and then the guy behind you gets a go at you as well, which uh, what happened to me yesterday in the race and this is, this is why cup racing is so interesting to watch. About half distance then in the race, and uh, Amamula then flashing his lights. Zogling has now got an easy, he's on main beam, he's not flashing anymore, he's just kept them engaged as he pushes and pushes Mikhail Amamula ahead. And uh, Dennis Olsen now, and it's a really interesting point that you've made across this sequence of turn one and turn two. This is where that Conrad car looks a bit better, it does seem to get better exits. Yeah, I think, I think. Um Dennis has got turn one, two, and three sorted out, and uh, Michael seems to be very good in the uh, middle and last sector. Just saw Piana go through on uh, Raykov, and it looks like the splitter is off on the uh, Piana car. You just see there, maybe not the splitter, but some damage on the uh, front of that car as uh, Raykov comes back at him now, and into the uh, hairpin we go. Mm. Well, it's as they were, actually. Yeah. Not expected that at all. Mm. I think that's a push from behind. OK, so uh, we think there was uh, contact there on the uh, 
Yeah. Stefan Rakoff car. I imagine that. So, um, don't know who that's weaving. No. Safety car? No. Raykov was on the grass, wasn't he? Yeah. I think he just got squeezed. Yeah. Very unfortunate. You have to have respect for each other out there as well and give you racing room, don't you? Yeah. Um, very ambitious to go around the outside there, but you have to be very aware that there is grass there and you don't want to see another driver spin off. Sure. Um, not intentionally. And um, just aggressive driving in the cup. And you can kind of bang wheels and hit doors, but pushing someone onto the grass is... Um, you shouldn't really do that. You should leave enough room. You can have a bit of contact. Olsen then continues to lead. He's managed to find five tenths. Zuckling at the moment, wherever he uh, throws it, as we see the Henrik Skoog car in, and Henrik Skoog's race is over, sadly. As you can see, he's out of the car. He was the car that, uh, you recall, we saw in the gravel and provoked the safety car just uh, a few moments ago. Yeah, he's very disappointed. And understandably, because, yeah. you know, that was that's a great shame, isn't it? Yeah. I think uh, Mr. Zoken gets another run down into turn four. Flashing oh. his lights as usual. <laughs> Piana there. Right, here we go. Zoekling in the um, all-red uh, car then. Uh, Amamulla there in the number 87 machine. And, uh, uh, again, nothing doing uh, on this occasion. And, of course... For Dennis Olsen, who's leading the race, the more Amamuller and Zoeckling can fight, that's best, that's best news for him, isn't it? Yeah, uh, but by the looks of it, I think Michael's car is beginning to come alive. Which is exactly as you predicted, right? Yeah, and um, I think by the last couple of laps, if Dennis can keep up this pace, there shouldn't be a change in the order, but I think Michael's car, is, is it looks a lot better than it did the first few laps. OK. Well, this uh, perhaps explains why um, Zoeckling is finding it so, so hard to find a way past the Amamula car Locked there. Up by the Dennis. Damage there from uh, Piana that we can see and from our commentary uh, position, Ryan able to spot that uh, Dennis had a bit of a lock up then. Uh, that will play into the hands of uh, the hard charging Mikhail Amamula in uh, P2. So around the uh, final turn, the cars are now the leading uh, pack. We are watching the uh, number 12 car of John Schmidt starter. Um, who's leading the B category? We haven't talked about the B drivers. I think P10. Yes, it is uh, Jorn, who I was just uh, talking about. Yeah. So it's actually in uh, P10 overall. But leading the uh, B category with uh, Wolf Natan P2 and Sargas, I think, is uh, P3 in the uh, B category. So the uh, Thomas Prining car that we saw there, but we're back to the uh, leading pack now, and they're all gapped about the same distance between each other. They'll all uh, concertina up now as they head towards the hairpin, but no one quite close enough to be able to make a move there. No, um, this is very good racing from everyone. They, they're, they're much quicker than the, um, the guys behind who are all fighting, which will play into their hands, but... Kogman and Retten yeah. back are here, well, and Kogman's on the grass. Ooh. Very aggressive. When you're, when you're in that position, Ryan, and you're just being squeezed out on the grass a bit, you know, you either have to keep committed, don't you, and pray, yeah. or, or um, <laughs> yeah, back off. Yeah, it's... I think most of these guys know what they're doing, and um, it could have been a lot worse. You can really push someone onto the grass, but I think if you make them get as close as they can to the grass, then yes. it's, it's fair. OK. So then that uh, leading group and... Uh, Amamula just looking a little bit raggy on the exit of that. And Ryan Cullen making the point there that his car is coming back now towards the uh, latter stages of this race. Piano is uh, running down there in uh, P9 in the number four car that you can see. Uh, Olsen, Amamula, Zoeckling, and uh, Yellowly then. And uh, Larry Tenvorda, who's a rookie into the uh, Carrera Cup, is running in uh, P5. So drive-through penalty for the uh, Gabriella Piana car. Or forcing another driver to leave the track. It's the Black Falcon driver. You can see the damage on the car. Drive through penalty, uh, which has to be served, Ryan, within three laps of the notification. Yeah, I think um, as soon as you see the drive through penalty, you have three laps, but ideally they expect you to do it within the next lap. Right. Um, 
some drivers choose not to see it the first time <laughs> and uh, say they didn't see it, but three laps as usual when you get to the, do the drive through. Well, the uh, front four then, as you indicated a few moments ago, have really they've got the pace, haven't they? And they've uh, rest the, left the rest of the uh, pack behind. This is Colkman uh, chasing down the uh, number three car of Luca Rettenbacker. Rettenbacker and uh, Colkman, you'll recall, uh, on the grass just a couple of moments ago, but all saved from that. They're running in uh, P6 and P7. And running in uh, P8 is the number 14 car of uh, Marius Nakan from the MRS team, which is the same team, of course, which is engineering Christopher Zoeckling. There's a lot of... Um, this is really interesting for me, Ryan, across any given Carrera Cup season. You know, actually, very often, drivers do swap teams, don't they? And, and the reasons for that are just, you know, a, a different car, different setup, different team environment might, might just give you the extra tenth. Yeah, I mean, um, maybe budget issues or... Um working with certain people that they don't feel uh, confident with or mm. to be honest um, I think all the teams in this championship are very professional and yes. if there is a change in the drivers moving teams then there will be a, a valid reason for it people don't really just change because they feel like it there will be a reason behind it but everyone knows each other here well drive-through penalty for Piano then and we just saw the reason why he was given that drive-through penalty uh, running that uh, car Stefan Raycock for onto the uh, grass, so he serves his drive-through penalty well within the uh, three-lap margin that you're given for uh, actually taking the penalty. And perhaps disappointingly, with uh, four laps left to run, the front four, they've kind of all found their comfort zone, haven't yeah. they? Yeah. Um, it's good not, not doing many laps at the beginning is um, probably not seeing what the um, tyre degradation was probably like yesterday. Sure. And um, I think everyone is probably able to just push flat out and not really worry about tired egg. And I think that's why they're all pretty much staying the same, same distance across the whole board. Inevitably, however, as we get to the closing stages of the race, there'll be some uh, late charges, rest assured. Now, the uh, third from last turn or fourth from last turn, when you're in the arena area, Watch Dennis Olsen bouncing across the curbs. That uh, left-hander has got real banking on it, hasn't it, Ryan? And yeah. we see drivers take actually slightly different lines through that turn, where they, uh, you know, they they feel presumably most comfortable and where they get the best out of the car. Yeah, Dennis he seems to take a, a much wider line and really use the bank and carry good minimum speed, and it seems to be working for him and the setup he has on the car. And okay. um, I think. The more traditional line is probably V-style, but you can get away with um, carrying loads of speed and not really be in the corner as much and getting a good exit. You can run a lot of curve on the air exit of this corner as well. So Olsen with uh, five tenths over Amamula, who has exactly the same margin over Zoukli. And uh, then it's the same back to Nick Yellily. Those uh, top four really are all placed very, very similarly as they're heading up towards the, uh, well, they're in the uh, hairpin now, and Nick Yellerly then, just uh, probably closest to uh, Christopher Zoeckling, as he's backed up by uh, Mikael Amamuller, who's running in P2. Olsen now beginning to uh, just streak away from them a bit. There is our race leader, the Porsche Junior, of course, with an awful lot of pressure on him to perform this year, Ryan, because when you are a Porsche Junior, particularly off the back of the hugely successful Sven Muller last year, He'll be really feeling that pressure, knowing that he has to perform. Yeah, and he's gone to the same team as Sven last year, so yes. he will be being directly compared to Sven, and I think he's doing a very good job at the I moment. I agree. Um, if you compare him to Sven on experience, Dennis is only in his second year mm. of cup racing, and I think he's doing a very good job at the moment, leading a pack of drivers that are very experienced, and um, yeah, he should be very happy with the way he's driving right now. He's a very different character to uh, Sven Muller as well. I was uh, chatting to him briefly at breakfast this morning. He's very, very cool, calm, unassuming young man, isn't he? Who seems to be able to take everything. And there is the non-aging Franz Conrad, who, of course, is responsible for running that Porsche Junior. Uh, Dennis Olsen, Franz Conrad, who has seen so much success in uh, Porsche racing over the years. And he's no mean racing driver himself in his own time as well. Uh, seeing his young charger out there in P1, who 
on that last lap, managed to eke another couple of tenths out of Mikhail Amamula behind him. I think the times, um, they were all within a tenth, but Dennis seemed to pull two or three tenths on the guys behind, which is good because there's only two laps to go. For the first time in this race, we've actually seen uh, Marcus Nakam get a warning with regards to uh, track limits. Okay. Uh, as we see... Uh, Luca Rettenbacher and David Colkman continuing to battle there and uh, panel rubbing together. Whoa, that's... That's not good from, that's not good from Luca. That's, that's bad, isn't it? Oh, OK. See, now, this is... Was that a little bit of payback, Ryan? I think... Um, I need to see that again, but I think that was very close racing and the, the two guys were not willing to give anyone room because that is a very crucial overtake spot. And... I think Luca was trying to hold his position on the inside because if he held his position, then he would have had the inside for the next corner. But I think David got a run around the outside and he's hit the wall pretty hard. Yeah. And lost the wheel, which isn't great to see. No. I don't know where that wheel was gone. Coolant coming out of the car now, and with only two laps left, it means that that car has got to be recovered. And I mean, it's not beyond the realms of possibility now that we might see this race Red completed in yeah. the under the safety car. Yeah. It, I think this is probably the finishing position. So. Oh. Another good P3 for his opening as a right. best driver. Here it is. Colkman then up the inside. Rettenbacker trying to get the cut back here. Yeah. Which he does at this point. David's turning in, but they're both turning in at the same time. And uh, I think they both need to um, have a word with each other. I wouldn't put any blame on anyone there. No. I, I just think they both need to not really try and squeeze each other because... David's got a bad exit. Luca's done the right thing, but they're both not. They're both turning. At yeah, the same time. they're both not. Absolutely like right. David started it, and Luca's then given him some back, and then there you go. And that was quite an impact, Ryan. Yeah, that. If I may say, not dissimilar to the impact we saw with you yesterday. Yeah, and you know, these cars are very heavy, and when you get the sudden impact, it does shake you a lot. Um, it's perhaps remiss of us. Yeah, that's We're that's that's going to hurt him. Oh, and then he got flicked up in the air. We haven't asked. Presumably, the, you are feeling okay this morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I should, should have done that a bit earlier, really. Yeah, I, I was fine to race today, but unfortunately, the car couldn't be fixed, and um, it's a shame. But, I mean, this is the first race, and there's a long season for yeah. to make up for it. But that is a hard hit, and um, not good to see debris on the track with two laps to go. It would have been interesting to see what the race planned out like, but I think this could be the finishing positions. Yes, I'm afraid to say that um, with uh, the time that we have left available, it's a very, very busy schedule here today, uh, that uh, the uh, race will probably uh, finish behind the uh, safety car. Uh, that incident is under investigation, which um, Kel Surprise uh, doesn't surprise us at all. Um, yeah, that this is... This is um, Coming from single seers to cup racing in single seers, if there was contact like that, you would you would certainly have a very big crash. And I can see that Project One are not very happy with the damage sure. to the car and their driver hitting the wall. Well, yes, of course. Primary focus will be on, you know, the man that took the impact there was yeah. uh, David Colkman. This uh, Christoph Huber we can see on the uh, pit wall. He's not happy. He's. I think Christoph is one of the more vocal team managers and yes. one of the more characters, and. Um, he, everyone knows each other in this paddock, and I'm sure words will be said after about you know some of the driving standards oh, in this race. Forget all else. Yeah. David's out of the car, and he looks to be okay. Yeah. That's the best yeah. news. Yeah, it's good to see that. So there, the checkered flag then. Yeah. So it's never the right way to win a race, is it, Ryan? No, but I think Dennis deserved to win the yeah, race. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I think Dennis, he drove very consistently, and he got good exits out of two, which... For me, I think his car was very quick at the beginning, and it, I think Michael's car probably was anticipated. No, well, certainly not three safety cars. Sure. But um, definitely, I think their car would have been very strong at the end. Probably Dennis's car as well, but Dennis seemed to be very quick at the beginning, mm -hmm. and he managed to hang on to it. And also, Christopher and Nick were very close behind, so Michael couldn't really push too much um, to try and close the gap in case he makes a mistake because then you get that's how you get overtaken so yes, this, yeah. this is the trick and um, leave yourself vulnerable don't you yeah very vulnerable and um, I mean the, the top four guys were very good 
equal distance the whole race and no real silly mistakes from any of them and it's all clean. Well, there is our race winning car then. Dennis Olsen, the race finishing behind the safety car. Uh, very good to see that uh, David Colkman, who was involved in that uh, in that collision, yeah. is out of the car and appears at uh, first glance to be all OK. But the, the car, to be fair, looked very second hand. Yeah. It's just the, the, the when the wheel hit the wall, it, it's quite a hard impact. We're going very fast there. We're up to um, fifth gear, and, the, and that little kink there is um, just a little lift. So we're full gas, and you're, I think that's probably the fastest point on the track. Really? Yeah, I think so. Heading into um, the, the flat kink, that's that's the highest speed, and uh, probably around the parabolica down the back straight. But from from an overtaking point of view, that's that position and. Uh, you can't really overtake in the last sector, so that's where um, you could see uh, a few crashes. Well, never like to see that, of course, but um, as I say, pleasing to see that uh, he's out and he's okay. There's uh, Franz Conrad then. Uh, very, very uh, happy. Yeah. I think that's a good um, start to the season for Conrad and Dennis. Yes. So the Porsche Junior then takes a fine victory although he hasn't taken the checker flag the way he would want to but their confirmation of the result then Olsen taking p1 Amamola p2 then it was Zokling uh, who will be appearing on the podium for p3 Nick Yellerly p4 Larry Tenvorder who's rookie p5 then it was uh, uh, Luca Rettenbacher Mark Marius uh, Nacken then and uh, then it was the uh, best of the uh, B drivers finishing uh, in uh, P9 yeah. overall, that's not a bad. A a that's good, not a bad result, yeah. is it? Jorn yeah. Schmidt startup. And good result for Wolf. Um, yes, I think uh, Schmidt Schmidt starter had a good lead, and I think Wolf only finished 0.4 behind. So that's very good from the B drivers. So take super slow mos of the top three then, and uh, taking P3, and we'll be up on the podium. Christopher Zoeckling. It's another P2, Mikhail Amamula, who will be on the uh, second step of the podium. His car certainly did seem to come good towards the end of the race, but whatever potential the car had, it wasn't able to be realised because the victory goes the way of the high-flying Dennis Olsen, the Porsche Junior, takes the win in race number two, punctuated by safety cars and various other skirmishes that went on and Franz Conrad down there to uh, congratulate his driver uh, straight away something we just touched on Ryan in the course of the race is the relationship that you as a driver have with your team your engineers that actually is critically important isn't it yeah you, you have to have 100% faith in the team and they have 100% faith in the driver and um, everything has to kind of work together in the fact that everything that you tell your engineer has to be the truth and you have to trust your engineer that he will make the right decision. And if you don't bond with your engineer and you don't understand each other, then the car might never really be perfect the way you want it to drive. Right. And that, this is when you get conflict in the team. And I mean, I know Frank Funke with Comrade, he's very good. And I know Dennis as well, so they're both very good professionals and I'm sure their car was very good this weekend. I could see that um, from yesterday they were very strong and they were very strong again today after Mike would take a double pole. Mm -hmm. And um, I think um, myself and Michael and the team, we will have to um, bounce back in the next race in Loud Ring. And uh, I think Dennis has proved that he's definitely in for the title this year. Now... Bene benefiting you, we hope, Ryan, is the fact that the uh, the uh, unique way that the uh, Drivers' Championship is scored in uh, Carrera Cup means that despite two wins, Olsen has only got a margin of uh, 10 points over Mikael Amamuller and Zoeckling is uh, there at P3 on uh, 32 points. So, And we certainly saw this with Sven, despite Sven's dominance last year. You know, the points margin is... You know, it's it's never huge, but of course you have to. Any point that you bank is critical come the end of the year, isn't it? Every point is important. Yeah, there's not massive points in the points difference in the positions, and you can you can 
maybe even finish top three every race, not win every race and still try and win the championship. So for Dennis, um, he's very strong this weekend, but it definitely gives him a bit of a banker for the next race that if he finishes second, third, fourth, fifth, he will probably still be leading the championship as long as, as, long as Michael doesn't win the first two races. Um, so uh, the second uh, round two races and uh, I think DNF in and consistency in this championship will be very key, but um, you can definitely, if you have a bad result, you can definitely bounce back with the point system. So there, Dennis Olsen. Well, Ryan, we'd like to say thank you very much for being on air with us. We guess you want to get down there in the pit lane and uh, speak to the guys as well. So we're not going to hold you here because it will be some time before we get to the podium. Yeah. Um, so thanks very much. Thank you very really much. Really appreciate you being on the air with us. And very best of luck when it comes to Laos. Ring. Thank you. OK, so uh, brilliant to have him with us there. Uh, Ryan Cullen then, who gave us the benefit of his experience uh, whilst he was... Uh, Unfortunately, not able to compete in that race. So uh, there we can see uh, Franz Conrad uh, down there again, celebrating another uh, victory for the uh, Conrad Motorsport team. And we freeze that there on uh, Dennis Olsen being uh, congratulated on uh, taking another win. So we're about to get the, uh, of course, there's always two podiums, A and B category podium seven and a half foot tall both Mikael Amamula and Christopher Zochling and uh, Dennis Olsen then will jump to the top step of the uh, podium <laughs> national anthem time Well, he was um, cool and uh, collected at breakfast. He's pretty happy now. Dennis Olsen then about to receive his uh, trophy. Holds it aloft. Look at that. Two out of two for the opening weekend for Dennis Olsen. And it's two P2s for Mikhail Amamola. You Whilst he'll be pleased to take that P2 trophy, he'll probably be a little bit disappointed that across the weekend he hasn't taken at least one win. He was perhaps our tip for the top at the start of the race. Christopher Zoekling, he made it onto the podium and takes P3 for the MRS team. You guys all get together for the obligatory photographs, then it will be time for champagne. So here we go, and with the celebrations, we say thank you very much for being part of Carrera Cup, and we'll see you for the next round of the Lausitz Ring just a little bit later in the month. From Ryan and from myself, bye-bye for now.